Now, this video follows directly after the, the one on uh, sensing devices. So we're talking about electronics. We said that uh, we do have a sensing device. We have a, op a processing device and an output device. So our sensing device could be the LDR, could be the thermistor, could be strain gauge, etc. Then the processing device is our operational amplifier. So in this uh, video, I'm going to explain how an operational amplifier works. An operational amplifier has uh, two terminals, the inverting input and then the non-inverting input. Please don't call them plus and minus. It's the inverting input and then non-inverting input. We've got positive and negative supply, and then we've got the output. Now, um, if you've got more voltage entering in through the inverting input than in the non-inverting input, then the, our output is going to come out as negative here. If there's more voltage coming from the positive, so not the positive, the non-inverting input than in the inverting input, then our output is going to come out as positive. So it basically compares the two voltages that are entering in through the the terminals. So if so, it compares the two that is inverting and output, so non-inverting. So if one of them is greater then you can tell what value you're going to get, the, the sign of the value that you can get, the, whether positive or negative. So remember that non-inverting produces positive output voltage. Inverting produces negative output voltage. Now a positive and negative supply is just the, uh, the uh, PD that is used to energize the components that are inside there, which are transistors, diodes, and etc., etc. An operational amplifier looks like this in, in real life. So uh, it has got to these uh, legs like that. Okay. When connected to a appropriate power um, to an appropriate power supply, operational amplifier produces V out that is proportional to the difference between the V plus and the V minus, that is non-inverting and inverting. So that's the formula that governs what I was explaining. V ought to be equal to V plus minus V minus, and then it multiplies it by an open loop gain. So A naught there will be the open loop gain. Ideal features of an ideal, uh, open operational amplifier. So it must have an op infinite open loop gain which means that when there's a only a very small input voltage, the operational amplifier will saturate at the output. So it will saturate at the V plus and V minus, that is the supply voltages, and uh, the output will have the same value as supply voltage. Infinite input impedance or resistance, it means that the no current enters or leaves either of the inputs. Connecting an operational amplifier across a resistor in a potential divider circuit will not affect the PD across the resistor. Impedance is the resistance of an alternating voltage. Zero output resistance or zero output impedance. This means that the whole of the output voltage is seen across the load connected to the output of the operational amplifier and none of the output voltage appears across the op amp. Infinite bandwidth. Bandwidth is the range of frequencies that are amplified by the same amount. So an ideal operational amplifier amplifies signals of all frequencies equally. If an alternating voltage is applied to the input, then the output voltage will have the same frequency but larger amplitude. Then we have infinite slew rate. Slew rate is the measure of the time delay between the changes to the output and the, on, and the uh, to the input and the output. So it means that it takes, if it takes a very, very small amount of time to produce an output voltage when you've adjusted the input, then it's in uh, the, the slow rate will be, inf will, be, will, be, will be good enough. So infinite means that there's no delay. As soon as you um, produce a change in the input, immediately you get an output uh, change. 
then I do operation amplifier versus a real operation amplifier. Um, where we were saying infinite open loop voltage gain in the real one, it would be 10 to between 10 to the 5 and 10 to the 6. Where we're saying infinite input resistance, uh, we are getting 10 to the 6 to 10 to the 12 ohms, which is high enough of a resistance. Zero output resistance or impedance, we get z uh, 100 ohms in the uh, real amplifier. Infinite bandwidth, you've got a finite bandwidth. Infinite slew rate, the slew rate is about 10 volts per microsecond. Maximum and minimum voltage is equal uh, the supply line voltages. You can have uh, the, the maximum, the pot, the, like the plus and the negative supply voltage, less one voltage less than the what you get uh, theoretically. When an operation amplifier is used in a circuit, it is usually connected to a dual or split power supply. Such a, a supply can be thought to be made of uh, two sets of batteries is shown. So we do have uh, that. So this will be the positive part um, and then this will be the negative line. So this negative going there, then this positive going there. So that's our positive negative supply line. And then we've got the earth line going there. So we are measuring our V plus and V minus with respect to uh, the zero volts as well as the output voltage. Then we, m after measuring those voltages, we compare them, multiply by an open loop gain uh, to get our V out. So the open loop gain is typically 10 to the 5 for DC voltages, which is 100,000. Now consider this example. Uh, if you have um, a positive supply line voltage of 9 volts and a negative of uh, uh, nine, minus 9 volts as well, uh, and V plus is in 1.4 and 1.3, remember our formula says V out is equal to A naught bracket V plus minus V minus. So if you say V plus minus V minus, that's 1.4 minus 1.3. Then multiply by the open loop gain, which is 10 to the 5. The V out comes to be 10,000 volts. So according to the law of conservation of energy, this is not possible. So what happens then? The output will try to get to this value as much as it can, uh, guided by the supply uh, voltages here. So the supply is 9 volts. So you can't go beyond 9 volts, which is 9 joules per kilo. You can't go beyond that due to energy considerations. So it just saturates at positive 9 volts. So our output becomes 9 volts. So effectively, you have amplified these small voltages to get an output of 9 volts. I hope that makes sense. So when you are getting theoretically getting an answer which is greater than what you are supplying, to the components inside the amplifier, we say that the operational amplifier is saturated. So it, this one is saturated at plus nine, our answer will be plus nine volts, is the output voltage. Then example number two, if the positive supply line volt is plus six and then minus six, then we've got V plus and V minus at these values you then subtract. Now in this case, you see V minus, that is through the inverting terminal, is greater than through the non-inverting. So it's going to saturate it in negative 200 volts. And so it can, you can get a minus 200 volts, but saturates it minus 6.0 volts, because that's what we are providing there. So whenever V plus is greater than V minus, the uh, the output voltage sub saturates at the positive supply volts. If V minus is greater than V plus, then it saturates at the negative supply volts. A comparator uh, compares, like I said, it compares whatever is getting in through the inverting and the non-inverting, and then multiplies by an open loop gain to get the output voltage. 
Now to study this diagram here, remember we've got positive V plus and negative V plus. So you just look at this one. This is a negative terminal going there, so it will be negative. Um, and then this is positive going there, that will be positive there. Then this one is the inverting terminal, and then this one is the non-inverting terminal. Right. So this will be uh, this will be plus Vs, this will be minus Vs. Now, as you can see, what is getting in through the is from this potential divider. And then what is getting in to the non-inverting is from this potential divider. Using our potential divider formula, R divided by 2R, right, times the, uh, Vs. Sorry, yes, times Vs in this case because the both are connected, this one and that one, the both are connected on this Vs, so it's a split potential. So we're going to get the same voltage there because they're in parallel. So you get at, uh, R over 2R times uh, Vs, so it means uh, you're going to get half of Vs, half of Vs there. And then here we've connected a sensing device, which is an LDR. So it's going to be the resistance of the LDR divided by the total resistance times Vs will give you what's getting in through there. Let's look at some examples here. Right. Um, in this example here, we've got plus 9 volts and then minus 9 volts entering through there. This potential divider uh, operates the the inverting terminal and then this potential divider so operates this non-inverting so we're going to say 3.9 over 13.9 uh, the total here times 9 volts enters in to the inverting and then on this one the resistance of the LDR over the total resistance times 9 volts is now entering through there. Then you compare the two. Whichever is greater will give you uh, the output that's going to come in. Now, since we've connected a diode here and it is in uh, forward bias with respect to positive voltage, we're going to get it on only if the output uh, is positive. That is, if the voltage that's coming from the LDR is greater than the voltage that is coming in through this potential divider here. I hope it makes sense. Now, they've told you that if uh, if the resistance of the LDI is 100,000 kilo, uh, sorry, 100,000 ohms, which is 100 kilo ohms, then you just say 100 over, uh, is that 100 kilo over 122 kilo uh, times 9 to get the, then uh, there you get 3.9 over the total times uh, 9. Then you compare. Then you you tell me in the comments whatever value you're going to get there. Please, let's be uh, proactive and get these uh, questions done. Right. Uh, the next... I think I should end the video here. Then I'll do another one on feedback. I'll do another one on feedback. Next, so I'm signing out for now.